fact, we already have a course of study in peace studies that leads to an associate transfer degree. And we're working on two other things. One is an applied degree in community organizing, and the other is a summer uh, rites of passage program, which would have high school students come to the campus during the summer to uh, study peace studies, but with the intent of getting them to understand what it takes to move into the college environment. Now I have a lot of thanks to give to many people. If you have a program, you'll see on page six of that program, uh, there are a lot of people that help to put this event together. Sponsorships include the Associated Students of Lane Community College, the Community Alliance for Lane County, the Eugene Weekly, the Lane Council of Clubs, the Lane Institute for Sustainable Practices, the Lane Diversity Office, the Lane Professional Development Office, the Lane Professional Organizational Development Office, and the Oregon Country Fair. And people that we want to thank, I will start right at the top at our college, the support of our administration, Mary Spieldy, Sonia Christian, for having the vision to embrace a program of peace studies in a time where it can be very controversial to embrace this kind of program. Also, we have a lot of other folks to, to, uh, to, to thank. Uh, James Florendo, who is on our Peace Center Steering Committee, did the wonderful posters that you see, as did Tom Madison in the Applied Art Department uh, for the posters and for our ads. Red Lion has provided lodging. Sarah Samano is providing uh, Sarah's tamales. That'll be food for Saturday. Uh, Matthew Wildman did the, the website. There's a multitude of volunteers. And then, of course, the Lane Peace Committee, which has worked for this whole year to put this event together. And you'll see them with red name tags on. So if you have questions, uh, they're the ones to uh, come and catch and ask your questions too. Oh, and I forgot to say the Native American Students Association also is uh, contributing to the event. On Saturday, they will be cooking uh, fry bread and, and native tacos that will be served out here just outside the Longhouse. You know, if you look around you at this Longhouse, it's uh, an incredible place. Lane Community College is the only community college in the nation with a Longhouse. And it was built in collaboration with the college and the uh, Oregon tribes, Oregon tribal nations, helped to direct the building of this wonderful space. And it's important to recognize this space as sacred, uh, space that needs to be honored. And one of the ways that we are honoring the sacredness of this space is that there are no monetary transactions to take place inside the Longhouse. So I know quite a number of you uh, prior to the event have made pledges to make donations. And if you want to make those donations, even if you haven't made a pledge and you want to make a donation, the donations table is just outside the door so that the space inside the Longhouse is held to be sacred and respected. So one of the questions that might be asked about the theme of this year's symposium, people-powered democracy confronts corporate rule, is how does that relate to peace studies or to peace in general? You know, many people don't see that connection because they look at creation of peace as the ending of war. But of course, when you begin to talk about issues of justice that relate to economic and social justice, every dollar spent on war is a dollar out of social programs for health and education. But really, it's much more than that as well. If you begin to look at the way our economy is structured, you will recognize that a good part of the financing for our military industrial complex comes from a partnership with Wall Street. The majority of money that we used through deficit spending from our government. That money comes from the banking industry, from Wall Street. And that money funnels through government to the military industrial complex so that it's in the interest of both the military industrial complex and Wall Street to have perpetual war. Because perpetual war 
means perpetual profits. And we're seeing that in our society today. So when we begin to talk about building a democratic social movement that challenges corporate rule, the rights of corporations in our society, it's a fundamental step towards peace. And one of the things that people also need to recognize when we begin to talk about corporate rights and corporate constitutional rights is that every time a constitutional right is granted to a corporation, a corresponding ability for people to govern themselves uh, d is diminished. That is, when corporations are granted constitutional rights, it limits the ability of government to regulate for the general welfare of their own people because corporations stand up and say, we are people and you have no right to interfere in our business. So one of the elements that we have here today is the move to amend group that is working very hard to create a constitutional amendment that would end corporate rights under the Constitution. And tomorrow there'll be a series of trainings by the move to amend that will be workshops geared towards specifically creating a social movement, how to build those social movements, and specifically to move to amend the Constitution to end corporate constitutional rights. Also, part of the spirit of this session is the Occupy movement. And we have some wonderful people here, like Max Rameau and David Bassamian, who will be talking about Occupy. David Barsamian has re recently done a series of interviews with Richard Wolff, and they've come out with a book called Occupy the Economy. And Max Rameau, he is the founder of the Take Back the Land movement, uh, which is now seeking to become national, and you know, they're going around the country training Occupy groups in, in the process of how to prevent homes from being foreclosed upon through a social movement. So one of the important things in social movements that we all need to recognize is the spot to start those movements, the spot to focus those movements, is to address the issues of the people who have been oppressed the longest in our society. Now, if we look around us, we can see people who have experienced oppression for in our, the entire history of our nation. And nowhere is that more evident than with First Peoples. And uh, our first speaker, of course, is David West. And I want, would like to ask James Florendo to come forward and introduce David West. James Florendo is the steward of our longhouse and a member of the Peace Center Committee. James. Thank you, Stan, um, and thank you for, to the Peace Committee for allowing me to be part of it this year. Um, to be honest, and I have to be a little honest here, and I'm glad that Stan um, talked a little bit about the Occupy movement that our peoples have been fighting for a long time. Um, I definitely had some reservations, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> while I'm all for peace, even I had some difficulty wondering about politics in this building and the discussions that take place politically in our institutions and how uneven they are and how unequitable they are and how controlled they are. And all that I ask of all the participants here because all those inequities tend to raise hackles with people they take stands, they dig in, they look at one another, and they argue, and they fight, and nothing gets resolved. Our planet's still going in a direction that is not positive for us, regardless of who's in office, regardless of who we vote for, because I think, personally, this is just me, I think our system is broken. Uh, we need to fix it, and the only way that we can fix that is not to have political dialogues, but respectful dialogues. In the native tradition, it's very important that we listen to one another more than speak, that we listen to the words that everyone says. 
not just the people that we want to hear, not just the people that we agree with, because everyone is a part of this planet. Everyone is a human being. Everyone has a living spirit, including the trees, the animals, the water, the rocks, the air, everything. And we need to learn to listen to everything. And I hope that you carry in the spirit of this place that respectful dialogue. You may not agree with some of the speakers. You may not agree with what I'm saying right now. But I hope you're listening to me and will consider the things that I'm saying as part of your decision making. Because we all have to be in this together. All of us. Inclusive, inclusive of the environment. Everything in the native world has a living spirit. Everything. We have no dominion over anything or anyone. That's the totality of the spirit. And that includes the creator. I hope some of you have that feeling. And or however you want to call that. But at this time and in that respect, I'm going to uh, introduce my friend, my colleague, my brother, fellow warrior. This man's been fighting all his life for Native people. And I've been privileged to stand alongside him. David is Potawa from the nations of the Potawatomi, Potawatomi Badwadme. That's what he told me it was, Badwadme. And you'll hear his voice, it's kind of like that. Uh, Miami and Kickapoo. He's the director of the Native American programs at Southern Oregon University in Ashland. He's the co-director for the Center for First Nation Studies at Southern Oregon University. He's a traditional dancer. He's a drummer. He's a spiritual leader. He lays no claims to being a medicine person. He's an elder. He lays no claims to being an elder. People approach him because he is. In the native way, you never need to state anything. People come up to you because you are what you are. And Dave's a respected man in our community and in the nation. He's been all over this country fighting native rights since I've known him. He's also the co-director of the native Conaway Nicotillicum Youth Academy. It's something Dave and I dreamt about 20, 30 years ago about how we were going to approach the change needed for Native people. And it was with our children. We need to start with them at a very early age to encourage them that education was a route that could have a possible solution to what's going on with us. But over time, I think even I have learned the solution for Native people isn't with Native people. It's with non-Native people until you recognize what you're doing to us, until you recognize the differences in what we believe in in terms of the environment, things will never get better for us. And when you do recognize that, they will get better for you and they will get better for all of us. And with that spirit, I'm going to call my friend David West up, not only give his presentation, but do a blessing for us.